The term overdiagnosis probably doesn't mean what you think it means. In fact, it's one of the most misused terms in psychology and medicine. So what does the term overdiagnosis really mean? Stay tuned. Overdiagnosis is a problem in both physical and mental health. You've probably heard people raise concerns about overdiagnosis of conditions like depression, ADHD, and autism that leads to big problems like pathologizing normal behaviors and putting children on drugs unnecessarily. But it turns out the real definition of this term is kind of counterintuitive. And so the term overdiagnosis is often misunderstood and misused. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. No way! Was that legendary actor Mandy Patinkin saying one of his iconic lines from the movie The Princess Bride? I just got worried that some people might not get the reference. As I learned about overdiagnosis, what started off as a simple issue of definition turned into a whole ethical quagmire. So let's get into the weeds a little bit on the term overdiagnosis, what it means, how it's been used, and why you should care. Now, when I hear the term overdiagnosis, I tend to think, oh, diagnosing it too often when it isn't really there. This turns out to be the wrong definition, but it's probably worth mentioning since it's probably what most people think the word means. When doing diagnostic testing and making diagnoses, there are going to be errors. More precisely, there are two types of errors. Sometimes you'll accurately diagnose someone as having a disorder, and sometimes you'll accurately detect that someone does not have a disorder. But you can also make a mistake and say that someone has a disorder when they don't actually have it, a false positive. Sometimes we call this a type 1 error. Or you might miss their disorder and fail to diagnose them when they should have been diagnosed, a false negative or type 2 error. In fact, as we've covered before on the channel, psychological tests have two values. Sensitivity tracks their ability to avoid false negatives, whereas specificity describes their ability to avoid false positives. Two things to take away from all this. First, it makes us acknowledge that we're going to be wrong sometimes in either direction, and we can even estimate how often that happens. Second, there's a trade-off between erring in either direction. Failing to diagnose someone may not get them the help they need, but diagnosing someone with something they don't have can cause them to be stigmatized, spend money on treatments that won't help, uh, be on drugs that have side effects and risks unnecessarily. But the proper term to use for what I've just described is actually misdiagnosis. Overdiagnosis is actually something else, something surprising, and something I found ethically questionable. Consider this quote from Thomes, Turner, and Schreer, 2019. Generally, overdiagnosis is understood to reflect the application of a diagnosis based on agreed upon standards to a person who cannot benefit from the diagnosis and who may be harmed. For many, overdiagnosis isn't defined by the accuracy of tests, but rather the well being of patients. A diagnosis that causes more harm than benefit could therefore be ethically questionable. From this perspective, this is not false positive cases in which the individual is diagnosed with something that they don't actually have. As I said, that's more accurately described as misdiagnosis. But overdiagnosis refers to cases in which the person does have the disorder, but being diagnosed and going through the treatment would not benefit them. It would, however, waste resources and incur risks along the way. Imagine a scenario where someone has an untreatable form of cancer and their doctor detects that it's there. Should the doctor diagnose it, let the patient know, and potentially go through the motions of risky and uncomfortable chemotherapy or surgeries that have lots of downsides and really no benefits? Well, according to some, it is not ethical to tell the patient about this because this would be overdiagnosis. The harms outweigh the benefits. A similar example in mental health might be something like autism. Now, we've featured autism before, almost like it's one of our special interests. Autism has no cure and really not many, if any, treatments for those who are adults living independently beyond let yourself be autistic and be comfortable with that, whatever that means. So how much does an adult autism diagnosis mean for someone like that? Well, until the availability of the Asperger's label in the mid-1990s, there were lots of eccentric kids out there who weren't diagnosed with anything. By today's standards, they should have received an autism spectrum diagnosis. Now they're adults in their 40s or older, and they don't know about autism, and they certainly don't think they're autistic. 
So what good would it do to diagnose them now? If there's no chance that the diagnosis will lead to treatment or improvement of function, then is it ethical to do so? Now that person may carry around the stigma of their diagnostic label for the rest of their lives. From this perspective, diagnosing an autistic person with autism would be overdiagnosis and should be avoided. Now let's think about this for a minute. This type of overdiagnosis suggests that it's up to your doctors to do the cost benefit analysis for you and decide whether or not to disclose to you that they know you meet the diagnostic criteria for a disorder. Now this is shocking to me. Given how little they know about me, how can they do this adequately? Where's my choice in the matter? Isn't that kind of condescending and conceited for them to think they know better than I do? What if there's a treatment that emerges later? Or in the case of those pre-90s autistic kids, maybe just the knowledge of self-understanding and sense of community far outweighs any stigma that might be attached. For the average person, passing a psych evaluation means not having disorders. But for most adults I've seen who go in for autism assessment, passing the test means confirming that yes, they are in fact autistic and their whole lives up to that point start to make sense. Now, while we generally try to stick to the facts here on Psy vs. Psy, it's also important that we recognize points where we need to continue to have ethical discussions. And the idea that doctors should withhold your diagnoses from you certainly qualifies. I think there could be a place for a doctor to have a conversation with you about, yes, you meet the criteria for this disorder, or yes, you have this issue that I've detected, but also tell me about the risks and the benefits and let me have a voice in the decision. Now, since this formal definition of overdiagnosis is not what most people think of, it turns out the majority of mental health practitioners are actually using it wrong. Thomas Turner and Schreer looked at how the term is used in the scientific literature and found that about 77% of researchers are actually using the term consistent with the first definition I gave, which really should be misdiagnosis, and less than 12% in mental health are using the term by the second more technical definition. So if you found this confusing, you are not alone. Even the researchers in the field use it wrong. At best, this can be considered a broad and narrow definition of overdiagnosis, but that makes the term really confusing. The broad definition being diagnosing too many people, and the narrow being diagnosing people who have it but won't benefit from the diagnosis. Two ideas connected to the narrow definition of overdiagnosis are overdetection, which is finding abnormalities in people that won't lead to symptoms. They might resolve spontaneously, not progress at all, or they may progress too slowly to really matter in the course of a person's lifespan. Another related term is overdefinition, where diagnostic criteria are expanded without seeing improvements in benefits to quality of life or to include those with milder symptoms that may not have much chance for improvement, but would be exposed to negative uh, physical, social, psychological, or financial consequences. Things that are not overdiagnosis, but often confused with it, are things like false positives and misdiagnosis, we've already covered, where a diagnostic label is inappropriately applied, but also overtreatment, where we treat the disorder for a correctly diagnosed condition, but the treatment is known to be ineffective. Depression and SSRIs maybe come to mind. And another term to know about here is overtesting, where we test people for things even though it's really not warranted. So we're just giving out too many of these tests so you get more diagnoses. Now, some argue that overdiagnosis carries real risks. Carter and colleagues, 2015, argue that sometimes health services take people who don't need intervention, subject them to tests, label them as sick or at risk, provide unnecessary treatments, tell them to live differently, or insist on monitoring them regularly. These interventions don't improve things for people. They produce complications or illness, reduce quality of life, or even cause premature death. Now, definitions of disorders are expanding, and the DSM gets thicker every time they revise it. Sometimes mild depression resolves on its own without treatment and incurring costs in time, money, and stigma by taking drugs and going to a therapist may not be worth it in some cases. Because we have birth date cutoffs to determine which grade you're in, some kids are substantially younger in their classes than others. Now the younger kids may exhibit behaviors that are totally normal for their age, but may look more like ADHD compared to their peers in the same grade. 
instead of saddling them with that label and putting them on drugs, maybe we just need to wait a little bit for their maturity to improve. And maybe the biggest risk of all is something called iatrogenic effects, which is adverse effects caused by medical treatment. If you take a drug that has side effects or have a bad experience with psychological treatment from a psychotherapist or something, that may prevent you from seeking help in the future when you really do need it and you might benefit. So how do we deal with this misconception and widespread misuse of the term overdiagnosis? Well, Carter and colleagues suggest creating a new term to help with the confusion. They say, using the word overdiagnosis in both the broad and narrow sense is imprecise for researchers and clinicians and potentially confusing for the public and decision makers. We suggest it should stop. A new umbrella term, such as too much medicine or less is more medicine, could be used for the broad conception and adopting a new umbrella term would spare the word overdiagnosis for the narrower, more precise meaning. So now you know how to use the word overdiagnosis correctly, and next time you hear someone use the term, pay attention to what they actually mean, since they probably mean misdiagnosis of cases in which people are inappropriately diagnosed. Do you think doctors should be able to withhold information about your diagnoses from you if they don't think it will benefit you? Leave us a comment and let us know your opinion on that. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to get more videos on all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking. Seriously though, if you haven't seen The Princess Bride, who are you and why are you still here? Go watch The Princess Bride.